Okay, folks, today is the big day that we are going to adjust the valves on the old dirt bike. I've got, um, eh, I'm about 12 miles shy of having a thousand miles on it. And normally I do it about every five, six hundred miles, seven hundred miles or whatever. But these was never making a noise. They wouldn't tap in, they was smooth, and now they're starting to get that little tap noise in it. And uh, just to mention for some of y'all that don't know, this is a brand new engine. Uh, done went through the break-in phase. I believe everything's war, self-clearance, however you want to say it. And uh, now they're starting to make that tapping noise. Most of your, uh, most of your, uh, four-stroke dirt bikes or I kind of want to say all four-stroke motors but not all but anyway the point where I'm trying to get at before I start uh, wandering off is most of them have a slight valve tapping noise anyway it shouldn't be so much that you just you focus on it you can't get away from hearing it but uh you're going to hear the valves just a little bit I mean it's a slight tip 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 mine are getting to the point that they're very noticeable I mean Usually on a cold start, you're going to hear the valves, but as the bike warms up, they should quieten down. Mine's wore to the point, you know, because I'm breaking in a new engine, it's wore to the point that they don't quieten down. They continue to tap. So I feel like it's time for an adjustment now. So let me turn you around. I'm going to show you what we're going to need. All the tools you're going to need. Now, this is going to vary from bike to bike. This is a 250cc Honda clone engine. All the tools you're going to need to do the valve adjustment. Me, personally, I like having a light. Um, you know, just kind of dark corners to get rid of them shadows so I can see. You're going to need a filler gauge. Most of y'all know what a filler gauge is. For you that don't, we're going to be using it so you'll see what it is and how it works. Uh, a simple standard screwdriver, or people in the south call it a one-way. Uh, just any old generic tool kit. This is just a simple $25 tool kit from Walmart. That's all you need. I have very expensive tools I carry with me. I've got some wrenches I've paid $50 and $60 for just for the wrench itself. You don't need them big fancy tools. All you're going to need is just a simple cheap old tool kit to do this valve adjustment. Now, just by preference, I've got my good ratchet out and extension only because this ratchet has very smooth action on it. When I say action, I mean, you know, when you're turning it. Uh, this this ratchet alone was $26, and that's still considered cheap in the tool world. This tool kit here has a ratchet in it. I just don't like it. It's very catchy. You know, when you're, when you're doing this motion right here, it kind of binds and catches, and it's just poor quality, and I get aggravated with it, and I don't like it. So I did get my uh, more nicer, I'll call it, ratchet out of my tool kit to use. And I went ahead and grabbed the, one of my good extensions because the one that comes in this tool kit is a little short. I'm pretty sure it's going to work. You can actually see a picture of it right there. It's a little short, and I just didn't want to be running in and out to get tools, so I went ahead and grabbed one of my good long ones. But anyway, in reality... This little cheap tool kit right here, it would be all you need to do this job for any cheap tool kit. You're just gonna need a 10 millimeter wrench, a 14 millimeter deep well socket or small one with an extension, and a standard screwdriver or a flathead screwdriver and filler gauge. You only need about four tools to actually do this job. So let me quit yapping, let's get started on it. The first thing we're gonna need to do, we're gonna need to take out this bolt right here there's one right there. Then on the other side, the left side of the bike or the driver's side, if you want to call it that, there'll be one we need to take out to get this cover right here off our valve. It's the valve cover. That's going to be the first thing we need to do. Then after we do that, and I need to get all this dirt off, make sure I don't drop no dirt down in valves, but here's that other single bolt I was telling you we'll have to get out. But after we do that, we're going to take this plug out this plug out so I can turn the crank or the flywheel actually what's in there to find my top dead center position 
The top dead center means there's a connecting rod right here with the piston right here. And we want to make it travel up, 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 up until it gets to its highest point before it starts going down on the compression stroke. We want it at its highest point. And we're going to do that by some marks we're going to see inside this. Actually, this cover here is just going to expose a bolt or a nut, whatever you want to call it, that we can turn. And the actual mark's going to be down in here. I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you that mark because, you know, getting in there, I, I don't know if I'm going to show it to you. I will try. But first, let me get all this cleaned up here, and we'll start taking the valve cover off. Okay, first step. Hmm. Well, looky there. That's a 10 millimeter. I grabbed the wrong one. So step number one is pay attention to what you're doing. And this is just that cheap little tool kit. Here's my tin that I was telling you about. And there's that ratchet. That's just, yeah, that's just poor quality, junky old ratchet, but it will work. Don't let that discourage you, it will work. All right, now I got my 10 millimeter, so we're gonna get in here and loosen this up. Actually, we're gonna take it all the way out. Now I'm gonna try to do this one handed and keep try to keep you on here where you can see, so it's gonna be a little awkward. This is pretty much what you're gonna do. They say you gotta take the gas tank off here. You really don't. It would, I mean, it would obviously make it easier, don't get me wrong, but you don't have to take it off. So that's pretty much what this is gonna be right here. Just keep loosening these up till you can get them out. So um, I'm going to pause it and just go ahead and continue to get these out. And then we'll come back. Okay, I've got all the bolts out. Got the valve cover loose. Um, now this is the tricky part. Without taking the fuel tank off, you got to maneuver this thing out of there. And I'm kind of going to need both hands to do it. But what you do, you're going to tilt it up a little bit on this particular model this is the raven 250 you're going to tilt it up a little bit tilt it this way and go out the left side and you'll have to wiggle it around you know kind of maneuver it around and they'll come out of there uh, that, but I, that's the reason i'm kind of going to need two hands uh, so this is going to be tricky i don't think i'll be able to show you how to do this but like i said every bike's different so what I do here really probably won't work on yours. You'll just have to kind of wiggle it around. Okay. We got the valve cover off. First thing you want to do, or I like to do after take off, inspect that gasket. Make sure you didn't damage it nowhere. That's a rubber gasket. Make sure it's still seated in the groove. And you're going to do that before you put it back on anyway. But if you look in there, there's your valves. That'll be the intake valve. That'll be the exhaust valve. Now I know I'm not on top dead center, and I don't want big old hands in the way, but neither, neither one of them will move. So at top dead center, there should be just a slight bit of movement. And if they're really worn, there'll be a whole lot of movement, but you should be able to wiggle it just a little bit. But anywho, that was step one. And like, like I said, taking that cover off, hang on, I'm looking for my screws. Uh, you just, you got to wiggle it around a little bit. Put my valve cover screws in there so I don't lose them. Uh, you know, like the way I got it off of mine might not work for you. It's just, it's kind of a Chinese puzzle, no pun intended, you know, Chinese bike. <laughs> it's sitting on there, you just have to lift and kind of wiggle it around and you know, just you just have to move it, maneuver it around until you find that sweet spot to where it just it'll come out of there. Or the easiest way, is just take the fuel tank off. I didn't want to do it because I'm going to take these plastic pieces off, take my seat off, take that off to get to the boat to get the tank off. I hooked the fuel line. This one has the EGR on it. Let me go over and show you that. This one has an EGR on it. Which boats right here, and I had would have taken that off. And uh, for you that don't know, EGR is you know just pretty much gas recirculation, engine gas recirculation. Um, 
Yeah, I just didn't want to do all that. That was just way more headache when I could take five to 10 minutes and just be patient and maneuver and, and slip that out. So I chose to do it that way. Anywho, step number two. Man, I didn't clean this very good, did I? But step number two is we're going to take this cover right here off. And be careful because it also has a rubber O-ring gasket. You can see it right there. That right there is the O-ring gasket. That's going to allow us to get in there to that boat and turn the, turn the crank to find top dead center. And then we're going to take this plug right here out. Ooh, that one was kind of loose. It wasn't really that tight. I need to start checking that. It also has a rubber O-ring gasket. Sometimes it'll stay in the block. I prefer to go ahead and get it out, put it back on the cap or the plug, because you don't want that to get twisted, squashed wrong, and it did, it stayed in there. So I'm gonna dig that out, because you don't want that O-ring to get damaged or you have an oil leak right there. Okay, I got the O-ring out. Put it back on the plug. See right there at the bottom. And I'm gonna set it right here. Now this is where I'm gonna try to show you some timing marks. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to. Um, so we're not near top dead center. Nowhere near the marks. Cause I can't see them. So I'm gonna need to get my 14 millimeter socket. Yep, make sure that fits. They're all the same, but I'm sorry the camera angles are all bouncing and shaking. I'm trying to do all this one handed. They're pretty much all the same, but they could be different. And you want to go counterclockwise. Hmm, how am I going to do this one handed? Be a shame. What a guy needs is a tripod. I'm sitting there holding it in my hand. I'm trying to get you set up now. Ground's on level. Maybe you won't fall over. Alright. F. There's going to be a mark that says F. That's your firing. Or if you're setting a ignition timing. Trying to find, it should be one that looks like a T. I haven't seen it yet. Not yet. Not yet. There's my compression stroke. All right, there's an exhaust valve opening. Exhaust valve closing. Intake valve opening. Intake valve closing. So that mark should be right here somewhere. And I don't see it. Let me pause you and I'll find this mark real quick. Okay, I had to go rotate the motor several times because you can be 180 degrees out. Can you see? Uh, get you in the right angle and see it maybe. All right, see them two marks? I can't get that shadow off of it. I almost had it right about there. You kind of see the one, it looks like a T, right in the center of that hole. You see that little 
see a little cut mark in the thread and if you look down in there you see a mark on the flywheel I'm trying my best to show you but it looks like a, a T kind of see it right there you want to line that right up with that little cut mark that's top dead center now you can be 180 degrees off if you're not sure as you're turning this boat right here which is your flywheel look up at your valves oh, if I can get the right angle that's a push rod right there and that's a push rod right there this is your exhaust valve that's your intake valve watch that go up which is opening the valve keep turning your crank until you see that go back down which is closing your exhaust valve and this one will start going up which is opening the intake valve watch it go up and when it start when it comes back down you're closing the exhaust valve start looking for that mark turn 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 till you line that mark up you'll be top dead center you should have just a slight movement which I do I mean you're not gonna be able to see it here on film but I could feel it sometimes if it's really bad you can hear it the exhaust seems pretty tight but I have movement on the intake now, I don't know if I mentioned before, but you want to do this on a cold engine. Don't be out riding and slide over on the side of the road and try to do this with a hot motor because your tolerance will be off. All your metal will be expanded where it's hot. Alright. Alright. The next step is going to be... Um, can you see that nut right there? That's on the valve stem. We're going to loosen it. There's one over here on the exhaust. So we're going to loosen it too. They're like retainers, lock nuts, whatever. That's not what we're going to turn to just. If you look at the top of that stem, that's what we're going to turn. First, we got to loosen them, them lock nuts. But what we're going to attempt to do... Oh, got it on the wrong side. No, I don't. I had it on the right side. It's just hard to see. Focus, focus. 0 0.002 that's where I'm gonna set my intake valve and my exhaust I'm gonna set it and this this thing is paper thin see how this flaps but this is a filler gauge you have several different sizes all that in there is different sizes of these but what I'm gonna do I'm gonna set my intake if it'll focus to 0 0.002 my exhaust I'm probably going to do uh, I'm probably going to do 004 maybe 005 I always do it a little bit bigger because it gets hotter and expands more so um, you need to check your tolerances first your, la your valve lash all bikes are different this one here the intake is 2 all the way up to I think it is and the exhaust is four to six so I'm gonna set it right in the center of five and uh, I'm gonna set my my intake at two I'm gonna put a picture up here again let me stress you got to find the valve lash for your particular engine your particular bike but I'm gonna put a picture up here of my valve lash my um, tolerances settings I'm trying to get this focus where you can actually see it see how that's at the top it says 0 0.002 and the bottom it says point or 0 0.05 mm them are two different measurements they're the they're the same as far as what they are the thickness but it's measured in two different types of measurements so don't get them confused focus 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 not going to do it is it there we go yeah don't don't get them confused if your if your lash tolerance says you know 0, 0 0.2 like I'm gonna set mine at but you go by that bottom number if you put it at 0 0.02 it's gonna be way off way 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 off and your bikes either not gonna run right or you're gonna mess a valve up 
be sure you don't get these two numbers confused. Even though they're the same measurement, like 0 0.002 and 0 0.05 mm is the same measurement, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about don't get that number confused with this number because then you're making the measurement different. And I know that sounds confusing, but uh, just whatever number you pick, if you can go by this number or that number, just make sure, kind of cross-reference, make sure these two numbers are on the same filler gauge. Yeah, I kind of confused myself on that. You'll figure it out. I made it sound more difficult what it really is. Let me get in here, crack these nuts loose, and then we'll come back and go to setting this. I'm going to try to do this without getting my big old hand in the way. I don't know how this is going to work. But what you want to do, you want to take your filler gauge and right in there where the, where the valve stops and the rocker arm tap it you know, ends, you want to go right in between it. And you, I've got it in between there. And you want to feel a slight drag, kind of like a, um, I don't know, kind of like a magnet. Say you, say you had it stuck to a magnet, how you could still move it. It would be a slight drag. I don't have that, so I'm going to tighten it up a little bit by turning that stem up there at the top. Uh, let me see if I can resituate y'all because I'm gonna need both hands for this. I'm gonna try this right here. I don't know how it's gonna work. I'm probably gonna be in the, the way of the camera, but because the camera's kind of in my way, I can't see. All right. So I'm gonna turn this stud right here, not the nut. That's a locking nut. You want to turn this the stud at the top and move your filler gauge back and forth. And this camera's probably gonna get out of focus because I got both my big old hands in here. Just keep slightly turning till you get a little bit of a drag. I got a little bit of a drag there. Actually, I might have too much of a drag. Oh, camera's in my way, I can't see. Yeah, if that filler gauge is bending when you're trying to push it in, you got too much of a drag. And don't push down on this while you're doing it or you'll get a false reading. So what I do, I just take my hand away from it and pull back and forth. And then I turn it a little bit. Mm, let me tighten it just a little bit here. And try not to let your filler gauge touch nothing but the valve or your feel will be wrong. What I mean by feel is you're trying to feel that slight drag. Maybe a little bit more. And don't be afraid to take time with this. Just, just keep adjusting. Ooh, that's way too tight. I'm gonna try that right there. When you think you got it where you want it, screw that nut down, that locking nut I was telling you about. Get it kind of tight. And this really ain't that hard. I'm just having trouble because the camera is right in my way. All right. Feels good to me. I'm gonna tighten it down. And then one little test I do on my filler gauge. Remember how we was using the .002? I go up a couple sizes. Uh, let me go find. Um, let me go a uh, zero zero point four. That shouldn't go in there. Actually, let me do the five. I don't know if this is going to show up. Is it going to focus? I don't think it's going to. Yeah, there we go. I went up to point zero zero five, which is bigger than what I just had. That shouldn't go in there. 
They get lined up. Nope, see how they don't want to go in there? How the filler gauge is bending. So that's good. So I know I'm smaller than that gap anyway. Let me go down to, oh, now the range is 0, 0 0.2 to 0, 0 0.5. So I know I'm good on that. And you hear a bunch of people shooting and a shooting and a shooting. They hunting something, ain't they? Um, well, come on. I keep my, old, my filler gauges old up and they're kind of slick and with them being so thin, they're hard to move around. And you gotta be careful on these filler gauges. That's 0, 0 0.2 and this one here, 0, 0 0.3 if I can get to focus. Kind of, sort of. They're super thin. They're almost like a razor blade. You gotta be careful though. <laughs> I've been cut by them. Okay, we set it at 0, 0 0.2. Now I got the 0, 0 0.3. And see how that won't even go in there? So we know our tolerance is smaller than 0, 0 0.3. All right. So let me go back to the two. And I know this video is gonna be kinda of long, but that's nothing new for me. All right. So let me go back to the one we originally set the valve lash at. 0, 0 0.2. That should go right in there. And if it don't, we've got it too tight. And looky there, that's the reason you always double check. See how that doesn't want to go in there? And make sure you're poking at the right spot. So, Okay, so what happened? i tell you what happened. As I was tightening that lock nut down, the stud turned a little bit. So let me loosen that back up. We're gonna turn the stud, see how that slipped right in there when I unlocked that locking nut? So that's something you gotta be careful for. As you're tightening that locking nut, make sure that stud don't turn with it. As, after you tighten this down, you should be able to slip that filler gauge right in there. And I always leave my filler gauge in there as I'm tightening it anyway. Okay, still moves freely. Still moves freely. I'm gonna pull the filler gauge all the way out it should go right back in all right there we go now we're cooking with propane but here's the thing I'm gonna do my test again I'm gonna pause you so you don't have to do that whole test again but I'm gonna do pretty much the same thing I just did get the 003 the 005 you know see which ones don't fit all right I did the test again everything's good this time it's perfectly 00 0.2 I just didn't want to bore you with I actually had to do it two more times so now we're going to the, go to the exhaust valve over here. Can I get you turned in there? Let me move the camera around a little bit here, shake you. And that's the exhaust valve. Now we're gonna do it a little bigger. Let the same thing, loosen the lock, lock nut. Mm, man, that one was tight. Super, actually kind of scary tight. Loosen it up. Now this tolerance is a little bit tighter. It's <clears throat> zero, zero, 005 to zero, zero, 006. So kind of a tighter tolerance here. You ain't got much room to play with. Um, find my filler gauge I want. I want the 0.5 or zero, zero, 005. focus see I got the point zero zero five we're gonna to try to slide in there and it actually does that actually don't feel bad actually feels perfect to be honest But, you know, now I'm saying that, that drag feels just a tad bit too tight. It should be 
kind of like a magnet. You know, if you stick something to a magnet and try to drag, drag it across it, that's kind of how it should feel. You know, now I'm sitting there thinking about it and looking at it. That goes right in there pretty easy. And that drag's going to release some over time as it wears a little bit. Because I don't think I can get it very much closer than that. You know, I think I'm going to leave that one alone. So I'm going to do it the same way. I'm going to leave my filler gauge in there. Tighten this nut back up. Make sure that stud does not turn with the nut or you're changing your tolerance. So tighten it back up. Okay. And do the old drag test again. Take it out. It should poke right in there. Have a slight resistance. Slight drag. And it does. So on this one, I think I'm going to go up one to zero zero point six, and even though the tolerance is so tight, you know you only get one number change. Um, actually, I'm gonna go to seven. If I can find it. Nah, let's go ahead and go to six. Yeah, that's pretty good. That was a six. It, I, it went in there, but it should. But I really have to force it in there, and I've really got to pull to get the drag. So let me jump up to... Man, these things are slick. They're so hard to, to get out. That's good. I don't want them to rust up, because you don't want rusty filler gauges. That completely changes the tolerance measurements. You want them to be slick and smooth. Even though it's aggravating, that's what you want. Let me jump up to... Let me jump up to 8. 8 should never ever go in there. No. 8 won't go. So we're good on the tolerance on the exhaust valve. Alright. So that part's done. What you want to do now is be very careful. Check your lock nuts. Crank on it real hard because you don't want to accidentally turn that stud. Oh, this camera's right in my way. So I'm Y'all gonna be shaking, moving around because I'm trying to get around the camera. Get my wrench on there. Check the nuts, good. And there you go, folks. <clears throat> that was a bad adjustment. Let me. So that's how you adjust the valves. And now, as far as putting it all back together, it's just the same way you took it apart. I'm gonna put the two plugs back in the block. I'm gonna put that cover back on. Put my three bolts on. Uh, start it up, and that's probably on. It's gonna tick a little bit when you start it because you've done this on a cold engine. Oil's at the bottom of the, of the block. Just give it a minute to warm up. Let the oil get to the top, and she should quieten down. But, you know, like I said before, these type of engines naturally have a slight tick to them anyhow. Uh, it shouldn't just be really excessive, though. It shouldn't be really loud. You know, you shouldn't be able to hear it over the exhaust and all that. But sitting here on the, on the, on the leg, you know, the kickstand idling, you're going to hear a slight tap. That's just the nature of these motors. Uh, but like I said before, I just want to stress it shouldn't be overwhelming. You shouldn't hear it over the exhaust noise and all that. But anywho, I just hope that helps some of y'all. This is actually only about a 10 minute job. Maybe 15 if you gotta wrestle that little cover off, valve cover. It just took longer this time because one, I had the camera in my way, and two, I was just trying to, the best of my ability, try to explain how to do it. But uh, yeah, it's very simple. Don't be scared to do it. You're not gonna mess nothing up. Just check your, your top dead center of your piston. If you have to, 
Roll this engine over 20 times if you have to to make sure you're on top dead center because you can be 180 degrees off and, and you don't want to set your valves at that setting because they're, they're just not going to be right. They're actually more than likely would be too loose because they're already going to be tight under load. So just double check your top dead center. There's marks on the crank or the flywheel, whatever you want to call it down there. Watch the rotation of your valves. Watch your valve, exhaust valve open and close. Then watch your intake valve open and close. When that two steps happen, look down in that hole and find your top dead center mark. And when you get that mark set, you should have a slight bit of movement in your valves. Sometimes the exhaust valve will be tight, but that intake valve should have, you should be able to wiggle it just the little slightest bit you should feel it move. If it's still on the load, you're not top dead center or you're 180 degrees off. Uh, you gotta be on that compression stroke. So anyway, I'm gonna end this video right here. I appreciate y'all hanging around. I hope maybe I didn't make that too confusing. Uh, Russ is inside sleeping. Uh, I lay him out. He's been out about three or four hours this morning. Uh, I come out to do this and he come barging through the door when I opened it and jumped on his bed. So we'll see him next time. But anyway, I'll see y'all guys again. God bless you.